Hey everybody, it's George the Tech. So this just came in the mail. I bought it with my own money because I've heard about it for a while now. My friend Dan Leonard has one, I know a few other people. And I just thought, oh, I gotta get one because I've been telling people to use them without actually owning one, which I think is not good. So now I own one and it's the Video Mic Go 2 from Rode, obviously. George the Tech. So what am I excited about with this mic? I am excited the prospect of one, a mic that's very affordable, two, a mic that's extremely portable, and three, a mic that sounds really good. All these things are important to voice actors. The price thing being what it is, I mean, at twice the price, it's probably still a great mic at $99, insanely good mic, I think, but let's find out. So let's pull it out of the box. What does it come with in the box? Well, it says it's got a digital output, and that's what I'm really most interested in, is using it as a USB mic. However, it does not include a USB cable, which I found out because it shows what comes in the box, and one of those things is not the USB cable. They obviously did that to save money. They did it because they have several different USB cable models, one that goes to lightning, for an iPhone or iPad, one that goes to USB-C, and one that goes to USB-A. Now, I happen to have the second two. The first cable I don't have, but I do have an adapter, which I'm hoping is going to work. So we'll see what happens. I'm gonna plug it directly into the phone and finish the video using the mic on the phone. That's what you see inside. Rode does a really great job of doing great packaging, uh, sort of a, all paper packaging, no plastics. Look how small it is. Here's the cable that comes with it to plug into a camera. This is not gonna work with a smartphone with a TRRS cable. This will only work with a camera with a TRS eighth inch input connection. So most DSLR cameras or mirrorless cameras or prosumer, I would say is the word I'm looking for. Here is the very, very cute and very well made shock mount. If this alone was $50, it would be worth it. And it actually is. These are actually $50 shock mounts that I recommend for people using Sennheiser 416s and other shotguns and pencil mics. So the fact that you're getting it, that's half the price of the mic right there. It's insane. Okay. The rest of what's in there is silica gel on a very tiny little user manual. It's probably just legal use. So that's it, that's the whole thing. I'm gonna take the windscreen off, get a better look at it. It's got a little tag on here. This is the person who inspected it for quality control. Very nice touch. Even at $79, these mics are tested individually in quality control to make sure they sound good. Not made in China, made in Australia. Pretty amazing. Here's the line output jack. This also doubles as a headphone jack. So when you're using it with the USB port right here, this actually allows you to monitor the mic. It actually has zero latency monitoring built in, which is pretty remarkable. All right, so the next question is, can I plug it into the phone and have it send audio in? I know this isn't gonna work, right? So I grabbed a few cables. I have this lightning to USB-A adapter, for example. We'll see if this works. If so, it'll save me $30 buying the lightning to USB-C cable that they sell. Let's find out. I'm gonna stop the recording, plug it in, and cross our fingers. Okay, it's plugged in. First good sign is that it has a little light lit up, indicating it's plugged in. I don't know if that light has multiple colors or modes, but if it actually is working right now, then you should be hearing me far better than before. Okay, well, first test shows that the mic was not being used. Even though it was plugged in and the light was lit saying I'm on, it was not actually using this mic. So you can see the light is lit right now. And I don't think it's using this mic. So either my adapter won't work with this cable or some other magic sauce must be happening from Rode and their special cable to allow to talk to the extremely picky Apple devices. 
So let's try some other th tests. Okay, well, now the mic's plugged into my Mac. So let's see if Twisted Wave sees the mic. Audio input, Rode Video Mic Go 2, boom. Is it recording this mic? Definitely. One, two, three, four, five. This is one foot away, one, two, three, four, five. About eight inches away, one, two, three, four, five. About six inches away, one, two, three, four, five. About four inches away, one, two, three, four, five. And two inches away, one, two, three, four, five. All that without the pop screen. So over the network, I copied the Rode Central app, which is what allows me to update the firmware. I ran the firmware updater and it was successful. So we have some actual software features that the mic has, which is amazing considering again what this thing costs. And you've got a high pass filter, which has two points of high pass, 75 and 150. There's flat, flat high pass filter, 75 Hertz high pass filter, which is what I would probably use 90% of the time. And a 150 if I was outside with lots of wind or something. There's a high frequency boost, which is something that comes on their Rode NTG four series mics. Nice to see it here. Direct monitor. So if you have the headphones plugged into the device, you get direct monitoring and you can control how loud the direct monitoring is from here. How cool is that? And then you have a pad, which would be for recording extremely loud things, or maybe in this case, voiceover, because since we use the mic so close, we might actually want to have the pad turned on so we can have more granular control over the gain. Not sure if that would be the optimal thing to do or not, but for now, leaving the gain about 25% seems to do the trick. Well, this is my last test to see if the newly firmware updated video mic go to from Rode will work as a video microphone plugged into the iPhone using an iPhone camera adapter, then connected by USB A to a USB C cable. Cross our fingers. Yeah, it looks like you do have to install and use the Rode Central mobile app, so you do have control over the microphone. But once you've done that, you now can record your Rode mic over the camera connection adapter kit. And if you go into the video app, now I'm in the video camera app. Again, being iOS, it doesn't tell you what mic we're using, which I absolutely despise, but it is working. I rest assured, and I'll scratch the mic as proof. There you go. What does it not come in the box that you will need if you want to use it in the way I'm using it? You will need a USB cable. It uses USB-C, so you'll need any standard USB-C to USB-A or a USB-C to USB-C cable, which is what I'm using right now to plug the microphone directly into my MacBook Air. The other thing you'll need is a, an adapter to attach the shock mount to a standard microphone stand assuming you have a microphone boom or stand that has a 5 8 microphone thread this has the european standard which is a 3 8 inch thread so it's not even a quarter inch thread like we all have on our tripods here it is the standard that's used overseas for production sound and, and pro sound which is 3 8 inch that's all you need usb cable and the adapter so you buy those things, if you don't have the cable already, you're at about 125 bucks if you paid full price for the mic. Thanks for listening. George the Tech out.